Do you want to know the secret to success as an atheist? Are you struggling to find meaning and purpose in simply living? Are you suffering from poor mental health because you feel out of place or that life might be pointless? Well, you've come to the right place, where I'll share what took me almost four decades to figure out on my own. This is the LTA of Love Therapy Animals, where I'll discuss the questions, can, should, and how can an atheist be spiritual? I'll then give you my three secrets to finding the answers to those questions. Just a quick note. This video is not to bash or discredit other people's beliefs, nor is it a platform to convert anyone into anything. There are plenty of other resources for that. This platform is for helping people improve their mental health, and I believe that atheists are underrepresented in this arena, and thus I am here to try and help uh, with an important pillar of mental health. Now, before I get started, I want to let you know that this video is aimed at three different types of people. First and foremost, though, those who are atheists and struggling to figure out life in a very theologically based society. Second, uh, other atheists who are just looking to gain some perspectives in order to help teach others. And thirdly, uh, for those that want to learn more about atheists. If you fit in one of these categories or you're just curious, let's go ahead and get started. So quickly, what is atheism? Simply put, it's usually when a person does not believe in a god or a higher power. Many of us fall in this category, yet we still feel a drive or thirst for to or to answer something. Uh, we'll get around to that here in a second. Next, what is spiritualism? Do you need God to be spiritual? Traditionally, I think most people think of spiritualism as the idea of having a soul or that the soul is meant to serve a higher purpose. Spiritualism is the actual act of serving that purpose. Uh, spiritualism and religion actually give most people the how and why of being on this little rock in the universe. But I, and I assume fellow atheists, do not subscribe to this interpretation of spiritualism, specifically a soul or a higher power. Yet we still need this how and why. Thus, religion will not help us uh, be part of something bigger than ourselves. Remember that drive I was talking about? Let me tell you why it's there by breaking down spiritualism into a couple of its components. Uh, first, we are social creatures. We've evolved through nature to be part of a group or tribe, and we naturally derive a sense of belonging and a sense of inner peace uh, when we're a part of these groups. It's programmed into us. Many, maybe even most, can find this through religion. There's a natural solace in being part of something much larger than yourself, uh, and religious gives us just that. Second is the soul. Atheists do not believe in souls. But we are incredibly complex and unique individuals. We are all our very own sentient beings. This is very much like having a soul. But unlike a religious person, atheists believe that the soul is lost or ceases to exist when we die. Uh, just a quick tangent, and probably to add a little bit to the story, not leaving any consequences or rewards for your soul after you die uh, is not what makes somebody immoral. An atheist is not immoral because of that. Empathy is biologically built into us. It's in our brains and it creates the entire platform that you need to actually have morals. It's simple to understand, do unto others as you'd have done to yourself, just by being human. I made that quote up. You can use it. Only specific people lack empathy and the capability of morals. Uh, we do not call them atheists, we call them psychopaths. Atheists actually just want to be good in this world, just like any regular religious person. All right, enough of the rant. So if you're watching this, I think you can see where I'm starting to go with all this. Atheists do in fact need to be part of something bigger, and we all have empathy, the driving force of being good. So figuring out how these hows and whys is what I think all people, including atheists, need in order to live the most fulfilled and healthiest lives that they can. This is actually my definition of spiritualism. Now, hopefully by the end of the video, you'll see that atheism and spiritualism are not contradictory or incompatible, they are just put together a little bit differently. So figuring out my how and why has led me to three secrets. But before I tell you them, I need to give you a little bit of context with a little bit of story time. I, like many of you, have felt this need to be part of something my whole life, even though I, I didn't believe in the God that I was raised with. Um, for a time, I even tried to be agnostic. Uh, but deep down, I always knew that I was an atheist. In my 20s, I became fascinated with this idea of the universe being this huge living organism um, and humans were kind of special in that regard and that we got to, got to be part of it. And for a long time, I found my purpose being that we're kind of a great species and we're capable of great things. So our part in the universe was to go out and go do those great things. Well, over the years, uh, my belief in this great species idea, doing great things idea, turned instead just to believing that uh, we're much more likely to destroy ourselves long before we do um, all these great things that I was envisioning. So my spirituality became rocked um, and contributed heavy, heavily to nihilism and depression. My sense of belonging, my how and why, have become destroyed or damaged. I now know that this loss can be incredibly damaging on the inside and is akin to somebody losing their religion or losing faith. It was in this 
period of darkness uh, where I spent a lot of time, therapy, introspection, that I came up with the real secrets to being happy and fulfilled as an atheist. And I came out of it with a renewed and much more lasting spiritualism. Three important ideas uh, that helped me completely revitalize and reinvigorate myself. So secret number one, sphere of influence. It's very easy to look back on my idea of this grand organism that we could guide the direction of humanity, um, add to its greatness, uh, that the ship would be right if I was right, that sort of idea. But my ideas and ambitions were way larger than my actual sphere of influence. As my initial beliefs in humanity changed based on the world happenings, it was easy to head down this path of hopelessness. So by narrowing my focus onto what's actually in my sphere, namely my family, my friends, how I live my life, my job, things like that, uh, I can better appreciate and take care of the things that I most care about. Um, this principle of influence helped me find my how very directly and much more succinctly than my old ideas. Uh, you may have noticed that I didn't use the term sphere of control, and this leads me to secret number two. You do not have a sphere of control. This is an incredibly powerful thought. It may actually be depressing or seem counterintuitive to what I'm talking about here. But bear with me. I will bring this all around and, and it'll make sense. Understanding that you have a lack of control leads to key component number three. And this is the, also the key component to finding your why. So secret number three. We are all part of a huge organism. You can call this humanity, society, or go as grand as the entirety of the universe. We do, in fact, play a role in the direction of it. But you're probably wondering, LTA, you just said we have no control, blah, blah, blah. That's right. Just as our bodies as an entire organism is not controlled by a single virus cell or a single antibody. But the more viral cells or the more antibody cells you have, the more influence that they have on the entire organism. Viral cells can band together to wreak havoc and of course, antibodies can band together and prevent havoc. This isn't a biology lesson though, so don't play my scientific jargon here. This is just a metaphor. We are those individual cells. We alone do not control the direction of an entire organism, but we are capable of contributing to the cells around us and do in fact have influence on the good or bad that can happen. Now we can kind of start tying it all together. We choose the type of cell that we are. We choose our why. We all have an influence on our surroundings, positive or negative. But that's where our role ends, influence. Being part of the greater organism, humanity, etc., we make an effort to be an influence of good until we no longer can. Our ultimate purpose is to ensure that we are providing the, the intended influence for the whole organism, hoping to achieve what we think that it can achieve, uh, but still recognize that we don't control its, its fate on our own and never will. Using these three principles, I've been able to regear my life into taking care of what's much more important to me, being a force of good for the whole while still remaining part of something that I feel is much larger than myself. I'm now free to focus on my own life without the weight of the world on my own shoulders. And I have started to learn how to not worry about what I can't control. Instead, I use each day doing my best to contribute in the way that I want. And should I die suddenly, I know that my influence will have provided the good I wanted and I believe that this will carry on into the greater organism, no matter what the ultimate outcome is. These ideas have helped me regain my own sense of spiritualism. I hope this little video helps everyone know or reaffirm that they do in fact need spiritualism, and I hope that I've provided some ideas to help you get there on your own. This channel is part of my journey, and I hope you want to be part of it, so go ahead and click subscribe. Let me know any questions or anything that you have in the comments below or in the uh, commentary tab. Uh, please like and share this video with anyone that you think could benefit from it. I, and I'm sure others, would love to hear your own aha moments uh, regarding spiritualism. So please leave those in the comments below. I recognize that my perspective is just one and my own. So you may be able to help somebody that I haven't been able to help. Uh, before we end out, just a reminder, be kind to others and more importantly, be kind to yourself. You are not alone. We're in this journey together. Until next time, this is Love Therapy Animals signing out.